Tonight, before we sit down, would you, uh, when we was asked that they play something through, we don't have to handshake, there's, uh, uh, maybe it's not the season for all that, but maybe you've got, there's somebody you don't know that's sitting around you, would you mind introducing yourself to them, or maybe if you do know, it's been a while since you've seen them, tell them it's nice to see them, tell them they're looking good, tell them they're in church, tell them they're losing weight, tell them, hey, I think that's a $100 bill on the ground, is that yours, whatever you got to tell them, make them smile, uh, but just talk to a few folks, and then we'll come back, and we'll uh, pray here in just a moment. Let's play, would you? Brother Dan? And so hopefully that wasn't too painful. Thank you for indulging. But uh, after church, I challenge you to um, uh, say a good, a good word of um, departure to somebody and, and be praying one for another. And uh, we're not ready to go yet. But uh, as we do go, then uh, let's, let's take it upon ourselves to be praying one for another. And I long for the time when church is not just where we come. Say, hey, good to see you. And then we move on. But uh, we ought to pray one for another, encourage one another, and check on each other as the 
Lord allows or Lord leads and they allow, I guess. But we're certainly thankful for the time to be together tonight. We've got a lot to pray for. And so you've got your prayer list and we'll go over that in just a little bit. But uh, we also have, have here in just a few moments, uh, Brother Mike McCombie is a good friend of our church, good friend, good BIA, my missionary, and has been a faithful servant of the Lord. He'll be uh, speaking for us just here in a few moments. But uh, we'll go over some prayer requests first and then we'll have another song as well. But I want you to be praying for Brother Bob Bryant, of course, over at his house and uh, keep him lift up in prayer. Jerry Scalf also uh, just needs our prayers as the Lord's continue to bring him through some things. And Diana Gallion had surgery as she recovers. Thank the Lord that she's doing well. And uh, praying for Miss Kim Brummett with cancer. has got some more tests and things to figure out exactly what is going on. Miss Sharon Harmon not doing very well, so keep her lifted up in prayer. And uh, Karen Cole, and uh, we certainly have many to pray for. But I want to give you some that probably aren't on your list. Uh, just talked to Josh Reed just before uh, the service. His grandma Phyllis Reed uh, got taken down to Johnson City Medical Center. I assume she's checked in, but uh, she's uh, last he knew that's where she was heading with pneumonia. So please keep uh, Miss Phyllis Reed in your prayers if you would. And Miss. Um, Emily Finner's grandma, her granny, Betty Jo Eisenhower, went home to be with the Lord uh, earlier today. And so that's Peyton and Emily's uh, family, Emily's grandma. So please keep them lifted up in prayer, if you would, please. And uh, we're also praying for Bryson, this Miss Risa Wampler's grandson, as uh, going back in the hospital, get some things checked out. So just need some answers for that little guy. So please keep Bryson in your prayers, if you would. And uh, then also, we heard today that Miss Jan Abernathy has pneumonia and RSV. So we're keeping her lifted up in prayer. And uh, pray for Miss Jan. And then <clears throat> many of you don't know yet, but the Grabers are a good, good, wonderful Christian couple with two little ones that moved down this way from Ohio. But they've uh, been having some uh, issues with Quinn. That's their youngest, about three month old. And uh, he's been having some seizures and thought they were going to have to take him to the hospital again today. And I don't think they did. But uh, his name is Quinn Graber. So if you'd keep him in prayer, we'd certainly appreciate that. And uh, asking the Lord to bless. And then also got a. Um, uh, a note right before the service that Alan Sherry Barker, their little grandson, Silas, just a little newborn, uh, is having a lot of issues. And so I told him we'd have a group of people praying at, uh, at 7 and that the Lord would bless that little guy. Silas is his first name. And uh, then we're also uh, praying for Brother Chris Bowers is having uh, ha had some testing done and has a doctor's appointment, got a specialist or a neurologist coming up. So keep uh, um Brother Chris, in your prayers, if you would, please. And uh, then we've got many others to pray for here in our list that you've got before you. And uh, so we're praying for, on the left hand, John Manetta and, and uh, Brother John Young and Diana Gallion, as we mentioned. And then our cancer list is there. We mentioned several of them, but there's more of them there in that list, as you see on your left. And then our health concerns, others that are going through uh, various situations. Right there, you see those listed. And then we've got some upcoming procedures on Ethan, Ethan Farless and John Farless and Wanda Huskins. And certainly want to lift each one of these up in prayer. Miss Jean Haynes, also in Francis Lawson, and Miss Pat Bishop. And uh, we've got uh, praying for Miss Louise Watts and Mildred Hill and Maxie Wampler. And we've got uh, others that are in need of prayer, but those are some that we've listed in the facilities. And then praying for some leadership here in our area. Asking the Lord to give wisdom and folks to be saved in those positions that they need to be, but then give great wisdom as they make decisions. And then our missionaries on the right, you'll see those, the Fords. Uh, got an encouraging text, Brother Marty did, uh, forwarded on to me from Brother Billy Ford, thanking us for what we voted on here sometime back to help with a new vehicle or another vehicle new to them. And uh, so they're very appreciative and they want us to let you know. And then praying for the Browns and the Seavers, and uh, we certainly are thankful for what the Lord is using them to do. And then you see tonight's guests, Mike and Wilda McCombie. Uh, you can see the little resume there, a uh, little bio, I should say, of what the Lord has used them to do in a special way. But Brother McCombie's always a blessing, always an encouragement, and I thank God for his uh, wonderful spirit, and we're going to get to hear from him here in just a little bit. Looking on the flyleaf there, you'll see the departments we're praying for, the ninth, 10th grade girls. Uh, Ann Rim and Miss Melina McGee, and then praying for the ladies' ministry as uh, Leslie and Amy work together to head that up and praise the Lord for it, and then praying for Brother Bill, Miss Megan Magnus, and then our Deacon of the Week, Brother Rick Hall, Miss Nancy, 
And uh, then our bus 11 is bus of the week, Brother Wade and Miss Nikki and Jesse Garber and Brother Leroy. We're praying for that bus, but praying for workers, praying for laborers in the harvest. And uh, not only on that bus, but throughout our bus ministry, that the Lord would see us, allow, allow us to see more people reached. And then praying for our military there as well. So we've got many to pray for. There's some upcoming events on the back. You can keep those all at your, uh, at your disposal. But uh, we've got a lot to pray for. I heard that... Um, Brother Rich, is it true you're looking older and distinguished now before you were? Are you a grandpa? Brother Rich Goolrip, and uh, they moved down here to this nice warm weather. You say it's not warm out there. It's warm compared to Maine. Yeah. Uh, Brother Rich and Marge moved down here from Maine, so this is, this is warm. He was going to wear a short sleeve shirt and just come on in. And, uh, but, uh, so congratulations and uh, praise the Lord. Their daughter had a little one uh, today, I believe, and so we're thankful for that and uh, praising the Lord for all that he does. So maybe you have an unlift, or up, unspoken you'd like to signify by an uplifted hand tonight, just something heavy on your heart. I as well have that. Thank you. You can put them down. And uh, we're just going to do it a little differently. I'm just going to pray and ask the Lord to bless these. Uh, I want to give uh, Brother McCombie brother, plenty of time as he comes and preaches to us. And so what I'm going to do is read over these requests. And as I read them aloud together, might you just uh, agree in prayer together as the Lord uh, has brought us all here. It's a time of prayer. And uh, we get to go over these, and, and the Lord's hand is not shortened, the Bible says. His ear is not heavy, He can hear. And so let's all pray together as we look through these requests and take them to the Lord. Father, we do come to you now, and we ask you for these that are having different surgeries and procedures coming up. Pray for Ethan and John and, and Miss Wanda. And Lord, we're praying for Joel Johnson and Jan Saylor and Sharon Pritchard. Lord, bless her and bless Brother Paul as he's out preaching somewhere as well. Bless Miss Pat Shaw and Joe as they're traveling today, dear Lord, traveling this week, but uh, keep her lifted up, we pray. Bless Miss Sherry Edens, dear Lord, strengthen her, please. Brother Bob Smith and Lola and Edgar Gamble, dear Lord, thank you for Brother Bill doing better. I pray that you continue to strengthen him. Miss Joyce Alcorn, dear Lord, as well, that you'd bless her down in Florida. I thank you for the Daniels, uh, Lord Bob and Sheila, as they've just a testimony of your goodness. I pray that you continue to uh, bless them. I pray for Brother Chris Bowers with uh, needing to get some things checked out. Dear Lord, just strengthen our brother and help him. I pray for Tracy Kirk and Jerry Scalf, dear Lord. And uh, pray for Debbie Deacons and Leslie Farmer and Pat Scalf and Judy Whitson, dear Lord, and Karen, Karen Bird and Karen Cole, Miss Sharon Harmon, Kim, Kim Brummett. Bob Bryant, dear Lord, all of these that are battling with cancer. We've got so many we need to do to work in their lives. Pray for Francis Lawson and Miss Jean Haynes, Miss Pat Bishop, dear God, uh, Louise Watts and Mildred Hill. And uh, bless Miss Wa Maxie Wampler also, dear Lord. And I uh, just bring all these requests to you. Pray for Miss Phyllis Reed that you would bless, Lord, strengthen her with this pneumonia. Pray for um, Emily Finner's family. Lord, in the passing of her granny, I pray that you would just strengthen that family and help them all look to you. Lord, we're praying for Bryson, the little guy, that you would just uh, give the doctors great wisdom into what's going on there. Pray for Miss Jan Abernathy that you would strengthen her. Pray for little Quinn, dear Lord, this little precious fella. I just pray that you would strengthen him today and uh, help him and help Julie and, and Tim as well. And pray for baby Silas right now, dear Lord. All that's going on with Alan and Sherry's uh, grandbaby, that Lord, you just strengthen and bless and do a great miracle there in his little body, we pray. And uh, Lord, we do pray, praise you and thank you for the Gould Rips, uh new little grandchild. Uh, I just thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. Pray that you would, uh, Lord, work there in a special way and uh, just um, give growth and health and safety, we pray. We do pray for our ministries here. Pray for the Sunday school. Pray for the ninth and 10th grade department specifically, dear Lord, the girls, that you would help these teachers as they minister to young people. And Lord, we pray for the ladies' ministry in general, for Amy and Leslie as they help uh, with that and try to be a blessing to ladies. We pray for the Magnuses that you would strengthen them. Pray for Brother Rick Hall. Lord, bless him and help Nancy as well as they, uh, Lord, try to be a blessing and a servant and a help to people of this church. I pray for our bus ministry, dear Lord, and everybody, let's please pray together. Lord, raise up workers. You, you, the one prayer request you gave is pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. He'd send forth laborers. Lord, we're doing that. Praying that you would send forth laborers into the harvest. Bless our bus ministry. Raise up new workers, dear Lord. Let us cover new areas and uh, see people saved, we ask. Pray for Brent, Matthew, as they serve you and serve our nation, dear Lord. We're certainly thankful for that. Lord, we just bring all these to your attention, and we ask you to work in a special way. And dear Lord, we ask you to bless this old church. Lord, it's a wonderful place. 
You've just done so much for us. We're so excited as if we were a brand new church plant, dear Lord. We're excited because the message is just as fresh, just as relevant, just as new, just as exciting, dear Lord, as if somebody heard it for the very first time. Bless Buffalo Ridge, we pray. We'll certainly thank you for all that you do. Bless the young people downstairs and the children upstairs and Ridge Kids, dear Lord. I just pray that you do a great work in everyone's life. And we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do, dear Lord. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Dan's going to come lead us in that old song. Calvary covers it all. If you're able to, stand together with us. And hymn number 120. Far dearer than all that the world can impart was the message that came to my heart. How that Jesus alone for my sin did atone and Calvary covers it all. Calvary thankful that Calvary covers it all. You say, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter. Calvary, the blood of Calvary, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Praise the Lord for that. Would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for just the thought of Calvary. Thank you for you covering our sins, dear Lord. Not as somebody that's hiding something and possibly to found, be found out later, but dear Lord, you, you covered it all. You cast it away as far as the east is from the west, dear Lord, not to be remembered anymore. Thank you for that. And thank you we can come and rejoice about that tonight as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we also are grateful for the chance to give. I pray that you'd take care of this offering. Lord, you just take such good care of our church. It's so wonderful to see the funds come in and the funds go out to proclaim the gospel dear lord we ordered more tracks this week just to get the message out of the gospel and lord what a good use of money to get uh tracks that have the message of salvation printed on the back just to get out to as many folks as we can lord thank you for a chance to give to these and other projects in jesus name amen you may be seated
276. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care on me to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. He all my griefs has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty tower. I have all for him. And all my life is torn from my heart, and now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me, and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. And he will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me. While I live by faith and do his blessed will. All oh, oh, fire about me, I'm nothing now to fear. With his hand, he my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweep me up to glory, to see his blessed face, where rivers of delight shall He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Well, what a joy to sing tonight, and I'm glad to introduce to you, Brother uh, Mike. McComby, there's some prayer cards out like this, and uh, he and Miss Wilda have been a great blessing to many folks, and uh, you can see a little bio, just a short one, in the prayer list there on the bottom right-hand fly leaf, and uh, we're certainly thankful they don't live too far from here. They've served in uh, mi as missionaries in Albania, and then also uh, church planters up in Boston, but uh, now they're to the uh, unreached people of Greenville, Tennessee. So I'm not sure which field's harder, but Greenville's got to be. It's uh, got to have its own little struggles. But no, the Lord used them in mighty ways. And uh, then you never retire necessarily as a missionary, but uh, you do re reposition some things. And God has put them in Greenville and uh, members of Central Baptist over there, a good church. And uh, then he travels around and, and speaks and uh, does missions conference and meetings and different, different events that he's able to come along and be a blessing. And uh, so we're certainly thankful uh, for them. And then... Uh, sometime back, I knew I was going to preach at Crown College this morning, and uh, so it just worked out to be a great time that he was free tonight, just happened to be the Lord worked it out, and I asked him to come and preach for us, and uh, they also, he and Miss Wilda, have him introduce her in just a moment, but also uh, mother and father of Miss Amy Pugh that joined on uh, uh, Sunday with their family, and so we're certainly thankful to have them, and uh, I would think any good mom and dad would come on up and join the church that their daughter was a member of, but we'll work on him later for that, but after church, you see if you can twist his arm and get him to come this way. You'd be open to that, right, brother? I, I knew he would be, yeah. Uh, he'll give the typical missionary answer, oh, if the Lord leads, yeah, so... Uh, Brother McComby, why don't you come on up? And we're certainly thankful that he's here and grateful to have him as a good friend and an encouragement. He's always a blessing every time I get to talk with him. And as we're certainly thankful to have him come here, uh, be our speaker at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. God Thank bless you, Pastor. you. God bless you. Well, he doesn't have to twist too hard, but, you know, we'll, we'll pray about it. Amen. All right. We had to come up and make sure that our children and grandchildren are being good. You know, they are your newest members that joined Sunday night. Gary and Amy Pugh and Townsend and Olivia. And uh, we just want to make sure they're fitting in here all right. And I think they believe they are for sure. And uh, it's good to be here. We were here a few weeks ago when our former pastor, Pastor Paul Chapel, preached for you. And uh, it had been... Uh, three and a half years or so since we'd seen him and his wife, and we wanted to come up and, and just uh, hear him preach. 
And he's still preaching just as good as he always has. Take your Bible tonight and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you would, please. And uh, we have some prayer cards out there on the table in the foyer. We also have some uh, free literature out there on the table, too. Uh, BIMI World magazines and other magazines. And it's sure good to see Summer Scroggs and... Uh, met her grandfather and grandmother, and and uh, it's been a while since we've seen Summer. She's well on her way to Botswana, working over there with uh, Brother and Mrs. Haley. We're excited for them, and uh, we've been involved with BIMI since 1993, and uh, for the last 17 plus years, we have been representing. We represented. BIMI on the West Coast, that why, that's why we were at, uh, based at Lancaster Baptist Church, and uh, we were out there 14 plus years up and down the West Coast, all over the West, preaching missions conferences, and, and uh, just uh, trying to encourage young people to consider a life, and older people. Uh, my wife and I were 47 years of age. Uh, when we landed in the country of Albania in Eastern Europe after it opened up uh, as a mission field uh, coming out of communism. Uh, so <clears throat> you're never too, never too young, never too old uh, to surrender to God's will, what God wants to do in your life. And if you have your Bible tonight, let's stand together and read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse number 8. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 8. Paul the Apostle writes under the inspiration of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, and I am not me to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But I believe this is a key verse. And I want you to notice uh, there's, there's one word in there a number of times. We're going to focus on that one word. Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would bless this service tonight, bless uh, our time together in the Word of God, and Lord, may it be used to encourage us in our Christian lives, and Lord, we just thank you for Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church and its desire uh, to serve you and reach souls here in this gray Johnson City area with the great gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, meet with us, we pray and ask in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. If I were to ask each one of you if I could do that individually, but I'll ask that collectively since we don't have much time to go around. Uh, but a very good question, I think, that needs to be asked of every child of God is this. What motivates you as a Christian? What motivates you as a Christian? Well, you know, the Word of God mentions here in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul mentioned the word grace three times in verse number 10. You know, that word grace is an important word. If you were to form an acronym uh, of the letters G-R-A-C-E for grace, uh, we could remember it the best way this way, God's riches at, God, at Christ's expense. God's riches at Christ's expense. You know, some 131 times, I looked it up in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, if you don't believe, you, believe me, check it out. Some 131 times the word grace is mentioned in the New Testament. I'd say it's a very important word, wouldn't you? Paul said in Romans 5 verse 20, 
Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Aren't you thankful for God's grace tonight? God's riches at Christ's expense. Paul said here in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse number 9, he said, For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But I like this part. And I hope you can say this tonight as a child of God, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Could you say that with me together? But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And Paul went on to qualify that by saying, His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Now, Paul qualifies his humility because of the grace of God. Uh, and he qualifies his humility here in verses 9 and 10 uh, in several ways. He said, I am the least of the apostles. And he, then he said, I am not meet, or that means to, to be to happen to be near, beside of, or to fall in with the other apostles. He said, I am not meet to be called an apostle, a title that God alone had given him. Why? Because he said, I persecuted the church of God. You see, no matter what we have done in our former lives, uh, whether it was something as wicked, bad as Paul did by hauling in Christians before the Jewish authorities and having them slaughtered as being uh, 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 witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ, or whether, no matter what sin we have committed, God's grace far outdoes our sin. Amen? Amen? God's grace gives us no room to boast. Amen? Take your Bible and turn over a few pages to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Paul writes again here, and he's talking about that motivation of grace. Ephesians 3, in verse... Number seven, Paul wrote, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less, get this, than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. You see, Paul goes on further to qualify his humility and his un unworthiness there in Ephesians 3. He said, I was made a minister. Now, what is a minister? It's a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said, according to the gift of of the grace of God given unto me. In other words, what was Paul saying? It was all because of grace that I'm anything at all for God. Would that identify you and I tonight? I think it would. But it's all by grace, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And Paul goes on, 
Uh, this gift of the grace of God was given unto me by the effectual working of his power. My friend, there is the effectual, powerful work in that word grace that saved our sinful souls. Because Paul said there in verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And Paul goes on to say, Unto me, I am the least, I am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given to make all men see the mystery of the gospel. What is the mystery of the gospel? It is salvation through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God. Oh, listen, what this world needs is grace. Amen? We look around us. We live in a sinful world. It is sick with sin. But what this world needs is to see the grace of God demonstrated through us as God's children. Oh, by grace, they can be saved as well as we. Oh, that is the ultimate reason that God's grace was given unto Paul and unto us also, Jew and Gentile alike. We all need the grace of God, amen? But the question remains for us Christians. What are we doing with the gift of the grace of God? Well, we certainly need to share it with others. Amen? Now, go back uh, to 1 Corinthians 15 again. 1 Corinthians 15. Based upon what Paul said grace did for him and became his motivation, what should grace do for us? Well, I see three motivations in this passage tonight. Number one, God's grace can make us what we ought to be. Or God's grace can make us how God saved us to become. Let me ask you tonight as a child of God, are you living up to God's potential of His grace that was manifested in your life at salvation? Because God's grace can make us what we ought to be or God saved us to become. And friends, that is a positive motivation. Ask yourself, as a Christian, what motivates me? Paul said there in verse 10, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. You see, grace is not our crutch, but grace is our strength made perfect in weakness. And my friends, that is a positive motivation. Desiring to use God's grace in how it was intended by God to be used in our Christian lives. You see, we are all, as Christians, accountable for God's gift of grace. So I ask you tonight, what are we doing, and I include myself, with the gift of the grace of God? Well... How do we get more of God's grace? How do we allow grace to get more of us? Well, thank God grace began on the cross of Calvary. And thank God, God reached down to you and I. And God's grace extended to you and I, amen? amen. Thank God for that. Uh, but uh, in our day-to-day -day living as God's children, 
How do we get more of God's grace? How do we allow God's grace to get more of us? Well, uh, in one of those 131 verses in the New Testament, and I'll give you some more. I can't give them all to you. We wouldn't have time tonight. But uh, there are some verses that talk about how we can get more of God's grace bestowed on us as his children. James 4, verse 6. If you want to write these verses down, you can look, them home, look at them at home later. It says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Amen. Do we want more of God's grace? Yes, we can have it. But James said, God gives more grace to the humble. Uh, Peter said it likewise in 1 Peter 5, verse 10, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, uh, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. Take your Bible and look over to what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 7. Paul had some physical issues. We don't know exactly what they were. Some Bible scholars and, and uh, uh, people that have done a little study about this have said that uh, the Apostle Paul had very uh, deficient eyesight. And it says here, and we don't know that for sure, but here in 2 Corinthians uh, 12 and verse 7, Paul said, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure." Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, as a result of what the Lord told him there, my grace is sufficient for thee. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then... Am I strong through what? Through God's grace. Amen. Oh, we'd all, I think some of us retirees can attest to the fact. I can, I can sympathize. I can agree with the Apostle Paul, can't you? When I am weak, then am I strong. Because the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect Paul said in weakness. Oh, what are the key thoughts? Well, we need to be willing to humble ourselves through our suffering. Sin less and strive to be more like our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, that is a positive motivation of grace. Oh, let me ask you tonight, is grace a positive motivation for you as a child of God. Oh, listen, we can be positively motivated by the grace of God. And then, not only should our goal be what God's grace can make us what we ought to be, or how God saved us to become, which is a positive motivation. Our, our goal, secondly, 
should be that the grace of God bestowed upon us by God should not be in vain or be empty. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, the last part of verse 10, Paul said, In His grace, which was bestowed or given upon me, was not in vain. That is a negative motivation. Desiring not to waste the perfect and precious gift of God's grace. You know, child of God, each one of us has only a numbered set of years. We all don't know the number. We don't know how long we have left in this life on earth, but we need to live it to its fullest using God's gift of grace that was bestowed upon us, which is a positive motivation, but also allow the grace of God not to be expended on us through the cross and the suffering of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, that we sang about tonight, bearing and shedding His precious blood on the cross of Calvary, do not, by any means, let God's gift of grace be in vain to each of us. Oh, Paul said, we then as workers with Him, he wrote this to the church of Corinth in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1, beseech or call you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. If you got saved, Paul told the church at Corinth, uh, he's basically telling them, don't waste what God has given you. Amen? Uh, he told much the same thing to the church at Philippi in Philippians 2, verses 15 and 16. He said that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation or generation. Does that sound like where, where we're living today? Uh, and he said, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice, Paul said, in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain, basically, by giving you the gospel and seeing you saved. There is no greater joy than a pastor or a missionary has, like your pastor, the Apostle Paul, that when he sees people saved, that they do not allow that positive motivation of the grace of God turn negative and that 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 grace is in vain oh yes thank God our souls are saved but is that all you got out of salvation there is more to salvation than that amen oh don't waste what God has given us uh, Paul said to the church at Thessalonica first Thessalonians 3 verse 5 he said, I sent to know your faith there to the church, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. Romans 6, verses 1 and 2, Paul wrote to the, to the believers in Rome, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know, there's one thing for sure that grace is not. It is not a license to sin. Get that. Grace is not a license to sin. Amen? Let me ask you tonight. Is grace a negative motivation for you in the fact that you do not 
desire in any fashion that the grace of God was bestowed upon you and that it was all in vain? Oh, let's not look at God's grace that way. Amen? And then, grace, thirdly, should motivate us to labor for God more abundantly. Last part of 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, he said, But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I see not only there in 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10, a positive motivation and a negative motivation that grace can be. But I also see that grace can be, be a fruitful motivation. Amen? A fruitful motivation. Tonight, as a child of God, what are we doing with the grace of God? 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, one of my favorite verses. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet... For your sakes, he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. What motivation that is. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said in 2 Peter 3 verse 8, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, I don't believe you would be here on a Wednesday night in the middle of the week if you did not want to grow in God's grace. Amen. And what a joy it is to see you here on a Wednesday night at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. That's an encouragement to me. Oh, Paul said, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Let me ask you something tonight. Is grace a fruitful motivation for you? Is God's grace causing you to want to bear fruit for your Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, we'll go through these real quickly. We're running out of time. But I, I can see three categories in a Christian's life that grace stands connected with. First of all, it stands connected with Christian growth. Listen to these verses. Ephesians 4 verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of it, edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. In other words, our words can minister grace to ever, whoever hears us. What comes out of our mouths? Amen. Colossians 4 verse 6 uh, says, Let your speech be always with grace. Uh, uh, so the words of our mouth can produce grace. How about uh, uh, Colossians 3.16? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. That's God's word. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And thank you, brother, for leading us in some songs that taught us to praise the Lord with our songs in our mouths in grace and then to worship God's Word and to read it and to study it. 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 12, Paul said that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, we ought to be glorifying God, amen, with the grace that God 
has shared with us. How about Hebrews 4, verse 16? Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Our prayers to God can produce more grace. Amen. How about Hebrews 12, verse 28? Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. That's talking about serving God through the avenue of God's grace. Oh, we could go on and on and on, but I think you get the gist. I got two more categories. I won't get to them. But there's Christian growth. There's Christian service like grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ. You know, we just can go around thanking the Lord and thanking each other for the gift of grace, can't we? Take your Bible concordance sometime and look up those 131 mentions in the New Testament alone. We don't have time to do it justice tonight. But do a personal Bible study on that word grace. Amen? And think of what grace can do in your life, in your Christian growth, in your Christian service, in your Christian giving, in your, in your time, in your talents, your treasures, your service for the Lord. Oh, we need to ask ourselves constantly, every day, what motivates me? That's a good question. Should it not be the wonderful, matchless grace of God working in us? My friends, if we cannot be motivated by God's grace, what can we be motivated by? I ask you, what can we be motivated by? I'll end on this. Two verses. Ephesians 2 and verse 7 says that in the ages to come, can you imagine what the ages to come are going to be like beyond this old sinful world? That in the ages to come, He, God, might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Can you imagine, ladies and gentlemen, what heaven is going to be like. Somehow, Pastor, I believe it's going to be full of God's grace. Isn't that going to be wonderful? Amen. Amen. Take your Bible and turn one last verse. The last verse in the Bible. Revelation chapter 22. You know how God ends the Word of God? I find this amazing. As I went down the list in my Strong's exhaustive concordance, I found the last mention of grace in the last verse of the Bible. Revelation 22, verse 21. Can we read this together, please? Set, go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I think that's pretty good, don't you? That's how God just finishes off the Word of God. Mentioning the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. You know what God wishes and I wish, my wife wishes, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the days ahead, however long we have, will be poured out on Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. Oh, we need an extra measure 
Paul said, of the gift of grace in our lives. Are you a vessel, an open and clean vessel that God's grace can continue to pour through and work? I trust that we all are. Let's bow our heads in prayer. We'll ask the pastor to come. Father, we thank you, Lord, for God's grace. Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Oh, Lord, we thank you for that positive motivation of grace. We thank you, dear Lord, for that negative motivation of grace that we use not the grace of God, we've not received it in vain, but that we would use the gift of grace in our lives to be fruit-bearing vessels. And that the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace would be with us all until the Lord calls each one of us home. Lord, work in our hearts through that wonderful gift of God's grace. And we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, Pastor. As we stand together, if you're able to, and they begin to play something through, here's my thought about that. Is the grace of God, is it being wasted in our lives? God has given us so much grace. For by grace you save through faith, that not of yourself. We understand the grace of God. I don't want to squander that and waste it. And have you ever, you've given stuff to people before, and they just seem to count it nothing. That's kind of a kick in the gut. I don't know I want to be a good recipient of grace, of the grace of God. I want to use what He's given me for His glory. And so if God's moved upon you tonight, and you see the need to let God's grace work more f fully in you, or maybe you've seen the need tonight to be more of an instrument of God's grace. God wants to use you in the life of somebody. Would you make a holy decision to the Lord? Here's the invitation. The altar is open. You're welcome to come. If God's speaking to your heart, I invite you. Maybe you need to share something with the Lord. Just make it clear, Lord, this is what I give to you. As they continue to play, maybe God's speaking to your heart in some other way. There's a need you have and you just want to go to the Lord about that. I invite you to come. Maybe you're here tonight and you're not sure that you're saved. Salvation is all by the grace of God. You don't work it up. You don't pull it down. You don't get good enough. It's just the grace of God. If you need to be saved, would you step out and come and let me or somebody take a Bible, show you how that grace can be applied in your life and you'll be saved. Thank you. You may look this way. Well, what a joy to be in church tonight. I trust that you've been blessed. And Brother McCombie, thank you for being our guest today. I'm going to ask you and your wife, if you don't mind, to slip out by the table. And um, if uh, Brother Gary and Miss Amy, you all want to slip with them, maybe they'll know better to connect the, two, the four of you together. And uh, just uh, so you'll know who this good family is and that they're... Uh, newest of our church, and we're thankful that God has brought them our way. But if they've got some questions, if you've got some questions about uh, some trips or some BIMI things, and uh, Brother McComb, we can help you with that. But I hope that you'll get by and just get to meet them and extend some uh, Christian encouragement to them as they go. I failed to mention earlier, as we were going through all those prayer requests, uh, that also got word today from Brother John Stevens that Marilyn is in the hospital having some heart episode. And so I'm not sure any of the details more than that, just something going on with her heart. And so uh, Brother John Stevens was our interim pastor uh, for some good long, good while before I was here. And so they're a special, special couple. And uh, so please keep Marilyn in your prayers if you would. I believe that's it. Thank you for being in church. God bless you. Say hello to a few people before you leave. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.